Hi, I'm your host, Joe Fagan, and welcome to this edition of Discover West Orange. This monthly program, sponsored by the Downtown West Orange Alliance, is dedicated to raising awareness and preserving our rich local history. A 1950 business directory of West Orange indicates that there were 10 hardware stores in West Orange at that time. Of that 10 hardware stores, six of them were located on Main Street between Eagle Rock and Northfield Avenue. Since that is a total distance of about a mile and a half, that means in 1950, you could encounter a hardware store about every quarter mile on Main Street in West Orange. I think this speaks volumes about the mindset of 1950s society. Although it was a growing economy in the post-World War II era, it was a society focused on fixing things. Unlike today, where some 60 years later, it can easily be stated we have now transformed into a throwaway society. Household items of today simply don't get fixed as often. When things break, they get tossed into the garbage and replaced. But in 1950s, there was a hardware store within walking distance in practically every West Orange neighborhood. On today's show, we will explore the historical significance of the location of West Orange two remaining hardware stores, and also talk about a West Orange school who is celebrating its 100th anniversary. You will be surprised to learn, as I did, the amazing story behind the founding of the Gregory School. We also will be joined in studio by Catherine Cusick Fernandez, the co-chair of the Gregory Centennial Committee, to, dus to discuss the school's history, the annual Strawberry Festival, and the construction of the Gregory Centennial Plaza. Stay tuned and join me on today's program as we journey through time and discover West Orange. Before we begin, I would like to make one correction. On last month's show, I stated in one of the segments on location on Main Street that West Orange Town Hall opened in 1938. This is incorrect because the, yeah, the actual year it opened was 1937 to coincide with the year West Orange celebrated its 75th anniversary. This is the actual newspaper from when it opened, and I had always known that, but earlier that day I was working with this photograph showing the West Orange Police Department taken on the steps of the newly opened Town Hall in 1938 and simply misstated the year Town Hall opened as 1938 and not the correct year of 1937 in the segment. The hardware store was and still is the quintessential mom and pop small business. It is a place where the owner is usually on a first name basis with the customers and the store mostly survives because of repeat business. In West Orange this type of small business wasn't limited to just hardware stores or stores on Main Street. Generations ago, small businesses in West Orange, like many small towns, often served as gathering places for customers to socialize and interact with one another. I know because I experienced this firsthand. My father and uncle owned a service station, and on any given afternoon, the back room was turned into an unofficial social club with regular customers drinking coffee. Today, all small businesses in West Orange are still places where customers connect with the community on a very personal level. Here are two store interiors. This one is the interior of the Ben and Franklin 5 and 10 cents store from about 1940. This was located uh, on Main Street and I actually remember going in this store in the 1960s and it still looked like this. This store would be today's equivalent of a dollar store. This picture here is also from about 1940 and is the interior of Levin Stationery Store once located at 277 Main Street. This is a great example of how customers socialized in any given business in West Orange. Mr. Levin is the second from the left in the picture, but more importantly, the gentleman to the extreme left is Mr. Ward. Now that name might not ring a bell with any West Orange residents, but his daughter was Evelyn Ward and she married Jack Cassidy, the actor. They had a son, David, and David, uh, before he moved uh, to California, lived in West Orange. He went on to be David Cassidy or Keith Partridge in the Partridge Family TV show. In West Orange today, two of the ten hardware stores from 1950 are still on Main Street. 
On today's program, I want to show how both these businesses are closely interwoven into town history and for different reasons. One because of the building and the other because of the business. The building of the, on the corner of Main Street and Lindsay Avenue has been a familiar West Orange landmark for nearly 122 years. Today is the home of Main Street Hardware, but this be building began as a flour feed and grain business in 1873. The original building was built by Samuel Hedges of West Orange and his brother Charles from Virginia. There was an adjoining store with rooms above and a whole row of several stores extending from this corner towards Northfield Avenue known as Hedges Block. Included in the stores along the row of Hedges Block on Main Street was a wood frame building that housed the first West Orange Town Hall and Police Department founded in 1884. In the, in the early morning hours of April 30, 1892, a fire broke out and destroyed the flour feed and grain business, the Town Hall, and several other buildings of Hedges Block. This fire in 1892 was a contributing factor for West Orange founding its own fire department only two years later in 1894. The current day building was built shortly following the 1892 fire. A young clerk who worked in the original Hedges Block flour feed and grain business was Newell Smith. By about 1900, he purchased the business from Samuel Hedges and ran the business until 1939 when he turned it over to his son. It was only a few years later when the flour feed and grain business became obsolete and it was transformed into a hardware store that has since had several owners. When Mr. Smith died in 1948 at age 86, he was the oldest living West Orange resident at the time. His flour feed and grain business is now home to Main Street Hardware, which is one of two remaining stores in West Orange today. But the building where it is located is a forgotten and surviving lost treasure of West Orange history. This is the view from uh, Lindsay Avenue showing the side of the building, and this is much as it looks today. Of, of noted importance here, is the stone foundation on the side of Lindsay Avenue. Now I'm not sure if this is the original foundation from 1873 or if this was the 1892 uh, foundation, but it's still there to touch and feel today. This side door was used for deliveries. Uh, it's not used today. It was used for loading and unloading horses and wagons. Can you imagine a farmer from Pleasantdale coming down, pulling up his horse and buggy in front of this door, uh, loading up supplies to take back up the hill? Another interesting aspect about the building is that there are remnants on the side of the building from old billboards. This one you can see uh, likely says Coca-Cola. And there's another one on the side of the building uh, from the St. Mark's side. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it uh, obviously was part of an old billboard. The building for Schneider's Hardware is not as old as the West Orange Hardware, but it is a longtime Torrey Corner landmark with some distinct and proud history of its own. The hardware store was founded by an Austrian immigrant, Isidore Schneider, and his wife, Becky, in 1923. The original location of the business was located at Torrey Gorner, just a few stores down from its current location. In 1925, the business moved to where it is today, and the hardware store was expanded to its current size. It once was part of the game room for the Torrey Corner Tavern, now the Fusion Peruvian Restaurant on the corner of Main Street and Prospect Place. Eventually, the business passed on to his son, Leon Schneider, in about 1946. Lee Schneider ran the business until he retired in 1999 and had more than 60 years of experience in that business that his father started. When Lee passed away in 2002, the business was taken over by his sons, Roger and Gerald, who operate the business today. They are the third generation who carry on the tradition endeared upon them by their father and grandfather. Today is the oldest family-run business in West Orange and the oldest hardware store in Essex County, continually operated by the same family. Most retail businesses today rely on computerized UPC coding for inventory control, pricing, and sales receipts. However, the oldest business in West Orange has survived for nearly 88 years by doing things the old-fashioned way. Modern technology has simply been no match for the enduring principles of customer service where they still use the old cash register and handwritten receipts. Walking into this building is like stepping through a magical portal back in time. The combined elements of the old tin ceiling, the paths worn on the hardwood flooring, and the old handmade shelving all add to the pleasant and distinctive aroma of a living history. 
These sights and smells provide added texture to an already abundant feast for the senses, all closely interwoven into our own West Orange history. I'd, I'd like to also talk about an upcoming event in West Orange that we've mentioned previously on the show, uh, about the West Orange Street Fair. That's going to be this June 7th from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., and it's, going to, it's part of the uh, New Jersey celebration of 350 years. A uh, corporate sponsored by Regal Bank, but it's the coming of uh, four organizations in town, the, the Downtown West Orange Alliance, the West Orange Chamber of Commerce, the Township of West Orange, and the Thomas Edison National Historic Park. It's going to be a day filled with fun, crafts, food, music vendors. It's a combination town picnic, street fair. There's going to be live entertainment all day presented by Pleasant Valley Productions. There's going to be special events throughout the park all day and free shuttle buses to Glenmont. It's going to be a beer garden, New Jersey Hall of Fame mobile museum, lots of activities for kids with, with a jump house and, and touch a truck. It's a pet friendly event, although I don't know if pets are going to be allowed into the Thomas Edison uh, part of it, but uh, bring your pets. Just leave your uh, bow constrictors and tarantulas at home. I will also be there uh, in, uh, with the Williams family clock in building number four. Uh, this clock is 264 years old and is the oldest surviving West Orange artifact uh, dating back to about 1750. Uh, I will, will have it on display there and uh, will be there all day to tell its amazing story uh, and how it was discovered in a uh, Illinois flea market in 2008. Uh, we'll be back in a moment. Hi, I'm Megan Brill, Executive Director with the Downtown West Orange Alliance. We're very excited to be sponsoring Joe Fagan's TV show, Discover West Orange. We hope that you'll learn something more about Main Street and come back and enjoy some of the great things we have to offer downtown. The Gregory School turns 100 years old this year and has since become a West Orange landmark. Perhaps so much so that not much thought has been given to how it got there. Like anything else, things are taken for granted, and as the years pass, so does its history. But at this important milestone for the Gregory School in West Orange, we take pause to reflect and remember how and why it began. The, th the southern section of West Orange can trace its early development to 1908. That was when the Hudson Tubes, now known as PATH, first opened. It made access into New York City quicker and easier, and as a result, many families were able to relocate away from the hectic lifestyle of the city. Mountain Station on the Lackawanna Railroad in South Orange was the first stop in a suburban setting, and this enabled many families from New York to settle in nearby West Orange in and around Gregory Avenue. As the population grew, children in that part of town attended Hazel Avenue School. In those days, schools had no ta cafeterias, and children didn't take buses and were expected to walk home for lunch. But for children in the Gregory section, this was too far and became a burden. Helen Woodward had been one of those families who relocated from New York City and recognized the pressing need for a new school in West Orange early on. She soon found out that if a new school was needed, she would have to organize the neighborhood to work for it and vote for it. She was confused by this because at the time, women did not have the right to vote. That wouldn't come until 1920. But in 1911, a little known law in New Jersey permitted women to vote in school elections. Helen Woodward and several other women, including Mrs. Campbell, Mrs. Dole, and Mrs. Beckwith, with the help of Mrs. Merrick of Llewellyn Park, helped get Andrew Allen from the Gregory neighborhood elected to the West Orange Board of Education. This led to the opening of the Gregory School in 1914. Joining me in studio is Catherine Cusick Fernandez, the co-chair of the Gregory Centennial Committee to discuss more about the school's history, the upcoming Strawberry Festival, and the planned Gregory Centennial Plaza. Catherine, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Joe. I'm happy to be here. Catherine, I'd like to expand a little bit more about the school's history. Now, uh, you are the co-chair of the Gregory Centennial uh, Committee with Susan Scarpa, who is also a, who's a teacher in the school. Now, when I, when I spoke to Tim Carter, who is the current president of the uh, Gregory School PTA back in January, and and we asked him if he could be here today. Unfortunately, the date didn't work out for him. Uh, I told him I didn't know anything about uh, Gregory School. And all, of all the things I've come across, I've never seen anything on the school's history. Uh, 
Um, but now that changed. What did you actually find in the school library? Well, actually what we found was Michelle Thompson, the, the current um, principal of the school, found a box of archives in a back closet. And she gave us those archives to review and to look through. And we found a letter from this Mrs. Woodward who gave a very detailed history about the um, history of the school and why it was built. Now, Mrs. Campbell was the, uh, one of the older women in the neighborhood. And, and she informed Mrs. Woodward that she'd have to vote. And uh, how did that surprise Mrs. Woodward? Well, Mrs. Woodward didn't realize that in 1911, she didn't have the right to vote in a presidential election, but she did have the right to vote in a school election. That was a little known law in New Jersey. Yes. In New Jersey at the time. Now, um, during the construction of the school, Mrs. Woodward had organized a, a couple of the mothers for a tea party in uh, Mrs. Allen's home. And uh, that was where they first organized the, uh, the Gregory School PTA. It was known as the uh, Mothers uh, Home Association. And uh, that gave the Gregory School uh, actually two distinctions. One was it was the first association to organize before, before the school was built. Um, what, what else can you tell us about uh, Mrs. Woodward? Mrs. Woodward was actually um, the wife of a, of a gentleman, and the family moved into West Orange. And as you mentioned, she helped to um, build the school and work with other mothers in the neighborhood to organize a movement and to help build the school, where its current location is at 301 Gregory Avenue. And the school was actually funded by the town. Uh, the school cost $20,000, $4,000 for the land, and another $16,000 to build the actual school. And currently, if you're familiar with Gregory School, the original location is now where the 1971 edition is located. I think one of the things that surprised me uh, was when Mrs. Woodward was organizing the, uh, the mothers, that one of, one of the um, levels of opposition she ran up against was actually the other mothers who didn't realize that they, uh, they had the right to vote. And, and were actually reluctant to vote in, 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 the, uh, in the school election. Fortunately, that all worked out, and the, uh, the Gregory School opened in 1914, and Mrs. Woodward was the, uh, was the first uh, PTA president, and she served uh, for seven years. Uh, let's, let's move on to this picture here. What can you tell me about this picture? Well, that is the original Gregory School, built in 1914. And as I mentioned, where that current location is now, it was the new addition to Gregory School, which was built in the early 1970s. Now, the main building, which is um, the large building, which had approximately 20 classrooms, that was actually built in 1923. So people, when they look at the school and they see the cornerstone, they think that's the year that the school was built, but it was actually built in 1914. And an interesting story about the addition to the school was that in 1922, there was a field study done that said that by 1927, Gregory School was going to be overcrowded. So they wanted the school to be expanded, and this expansion had been rejected in four previous um, elections by West Orange voters. Finally, in 1922, there was a large advertisement placed in the newspaper prior to the election um, phone calls were made and a wide margin of 430 passed so that the addition of the school could be built. So they, they, they foresee, foresaw the need for, uh, to expand the school. Now, for the uh, uh, 100th anniversary, this new logo was, uh, uh, was uh, designed. And now, who, who's responsible for this logo? That is a current parent whose name is Jonathan Selikoff, and he donated his time and his energy and came up with this logo for the current centennial. And we're currently using that on um, different products that we're going to be selling at um, the Strawberry Festival. Now, you up. have a t-shirt here? Like? I do have a t-shirt, yes. So we're, this is the t-shirt that has the Gregory School Centennial logo and the current um, um, eagle. eagle is the school's um, mascot. So that's what that symbolizes. And there's 100 ticks on this shirt. Oh, so it's one, right, years. for 100 years. And um, 
we also are going to be having other um, items as well. So we thank Mr. Selikoff for his um, participation well, he, dedication. Well, he did a wonderful job, and, and, I sh and I should mention that the book that you have on set here is uh, part of the, uh, the uh, book that was found in the archives That's that helped piece together the, um, uh, the mystery, uh, so to speak, of the founding of Gregory School. Now, you yourself are an alumni of uh, Gregory School, and uh, you brought in a couple of pictures here. Now, what, what are we looking at here? This is my second grade picture, my third grade picture, and my fourth grade picture. Okay, this is your second grade picture. This is your third grade picture. Now, I didn't want to embarrass you. Where are you in this picture? I am actually, if you look on the fourth row to the uh, right, and I'm halfway down the aisle with a short uh, dress on with puffy sleeves. Okay, and now this is your fourth, fourth grade picture. And now, in those days, pictures were taken actually in the classroom? Yes, the pictures were taken in the classroom. Everybody had to have their hands folded, and there was no individual color picture, so... That's why nobody from Gregory School has individual class pictures now, from, 19, from the 1960s. My what, apologies. What's interesting is your mother was actually a teacher at the Gregory School. Yes, my mother taught at Gregory School from 1966 to 1993. She taught grades 5 and 6. And an interesting story that when I was going into 6th grade, she moved down to 5th grade. So I didn't have her as a teacher. However, my brother, who's two years younger than me, was in the same grade as her, but did not have her as a teacher, as that would have been a little bit of a now, like, conflict did, of interest. Did you discuss that at home, uh, that she was going to not have you as a student? Um, I don't think I knew until that year when I started. My mother told me, said, oh, by the way, I'm going up to sixth grade, so you won't have me as a teacher. Now, how did that work out for your brother? Oh, I think it worked out pretty well for him, and, and all of my friends know my mother very well. Now, you lived uh, in the Gregory neighborhood. How far were you away from the school? I lived on Helen Avenue, which is literally right across the street. If you cross over um, North Walker Road going towards South Orange, that's the first street. And my mother had a three-house commute. So you also mentioned to me that you were never late for school. No, I was never late for school. I could hear the bells ringing, but I was never late. Well, you all, all you had to do was... Uh, was run across the street. <laughs> That's correct. Now, um, one big aspect is the Strawberry Festival. Now, this uh, is upcoming. That's this, this May 31st uh, from noon to 4. Now, the Strawberry Festival began in 1938. What actually is the Strawberry Festival? What the Strawberry Festival is, Joe, is it's a celebration of the school year, and it's actually the largest fundraiser the school has. And it's basically a fair where the kids can go on rides. They have... Uh, games, they have arcades, there's going to be a dunk tank, um, which is something new that we didn't have. Will the teachers be participating in the dunk tank? I think so, yes, and there's also going to be town dignitaries that I think are going to be in the dunk tank. I think our esteemed mayor... Uh, That's Mr. always an added inspiration. Yes, so the kids can throw as much as they want and try to get them in the dunk tank. And also, um, I was approached by the committee, and they asked me, what did we have when I was growing up? And I, I remember that we had pony rides, we had like a spin art, there was um, a, a beanbag toss, there was uh, Guess Your Weight, the teachers. So my, as a matter of fact, somebody let me know that my mother was actually on the Guess Your Weight station for the kids. And I, I don't think you can do that today now because of, of different laws. I always try to avoid the, uh, <laughs> the Guess the Weight uh, on the boardwalk, and of course they never guess it anyway. Right. Now you brought in some pictures here. These are from the 1940s, and these uh, are representative of what the Strawberry Festival and the uh, various events. Now, this is actually on the Gregory School grounds. Right. And, uh, and here you can see uh, the pony rides. Now, you said the pony rides were discontinued for a number of years? Yeah, that was my understanding. Uh, they're actually bringing back the pony rides this year because I thought it would be a really nice touch because we're having alumni events at the Strawberry Festival to coincide with the centennial um, of the school, and we're going to have tours of the school. We're going to have the archives are going to be on display. Some of the old teachers are going to be there. So I really encourage the alumni to think about attending with their, their children and their grandchildren. Now, this happens to be one of my favorite pictures here. This actually uh, shows a clown and, and has the board there and the various events going on. And to the right of the picture, you can see, uh, see some kids uh, actually poking their head into, into the picture. Now, uh, what I thought was interesting is... Uh, on June 6, 1944, of course, that was the uh, Allied invasion of France. But that also coincides, June 1st, 1944, was the uh, first edition of the West Orange Chronicle. 
And uh, I had found on, in the second edition of the West Orange Chronicle from June 8th, 1944, the Strawberry Festival name was actually changed to the Victory Festival uh, uh, in, to coincide with the uh, Allied invasion of France. And uh, I found this picture, and uh, to the uh, right is, uh, that's Mr. Miller. He's the uh, principal of the Gregory School and this, this cardboard Jeep that they made. Uh, finally, uh, let's talk about the uh, Gregory um, Centennial Plaza. What is the Gregory Centennial Plaza? Well, what the Gregory Centennial Plaza is, is um, it's going to be a plaza that's built right on the school grounds close to the um, current parking lot that's going to offer like a sanctuary for students and for the community to come and sit and reflect and to possibly hold classes out there. And uh, like I said, this is to coincide with the centennial of the, the school, and we thought this would be a really nice um, um, reminder of the school's history and the fact that the original Gregory School has been at 301 Gregory Avenue for the last 100 years. Now, an important <coughs> element of the Gregory Centennial Plaza is going to be the pavers. That's correct. You're selling the pavers, and the pavers uh, will go in, and they will help uh, fund the Centennial Plaza. That's correct. And... Um, I think we have, uh, this is an artist's conception of what it will look like. Yes. Um, now, I also want to put up here, if anyone is interested in a Centennial Plaza paver, uh, by credit card or PayPal order, they can go to www.bricksrus.com backslash order backslash Gregory, and they can actually order and pay for a paver online. That is correct. And the, de the deadline that we're asking is June 9th, the latest day that you can place your order online. Have sales been uh, brisk or are you? Uh... We actually are, are really pushing right now. We did a canvas of the neighborhood. We're having an alumni um, uh, event coming up. And we are actually looking for businesses in West Orange to also participate. And it doesn't have to be, um, what you can put on the brick is, is anything that you want. I've done one for my family. We've done one just for my mother. You can wish somebody a happy anniversary, a happy birthday. And uh, basically, like I said, we ask that you purchase a brick and it's to think about the future. You know, we're gonna be long gone in the school and the plaza will, soon, will still be there many years after. And we're hoping uh, to make an impact in the neighborhood and, and just to make it a nicer place to be. Well, also, here's where you can email uh, GregoryPavers100 at yahoo.com or you can call this phone number, 917-692-3640, uh, for more information. Uh, and, and, Catherine, I want to say that uh, as much as Helen Woodward was a visionary 100 years ago, uh, I think that it's fair to say that you are a visionary uh, as part uh, as, as your uh, role as co-chair on the Gregory Centennial Plaza, uh, spearheading the effort with, with uh, Susan Scarpa to uh, make uh, the Gregory Centennial Plaza uh, a memorable event that 100 years from now, uh, not only will they be talking about Helen Woodward, they'll be talking about who was Catherine Cusick Fernandez. Uh, and uh, hopefully someone will, uh, will take the role and uh, continue the, uh, the path on its incredible journey through time. I really hope so, Tim. And I'd also like to let the audience know that we're having the dedication ceremony at 5 p.m. on September 19th. Now, you called me Tim, but you're, of course, referring Tim, to Tim. Tim, I apologize. I meant, uh, I'm, I'm I Joe. meant Joe. Uh, so uh, in any event, Catherine, I want to thank you for, for coming on the show today and sharing this, uh, the amazing history of Gregory School with us. And... Uh, Please consider purchasing a paver to uh, uh, support the Gregory School on its uh, 100th anniversary. Uh, we'll be back in a moment. If anyone would like to contact the show, you can do so online. Here is my email address. It's very simple to remember, Joseph Fagan, my name, at westorangehistory.com. Or if you prefer the old-fashioned way, you can contact me via the downtown West Orange Alliance at 66 Main Street in West Orange, and, of course, that's the same address as West Orange Town Hall. In 1914, the war to end all wars broke out in Europe. Wrigley Field first opened in Chicago. And in West Orange, the Gregory School opened. It since has become a fixture on the local landscape and can trace its humble beginnings to a dedicated group of neighborhood mothers. It turns 100 years old this year and conceals both its age and history 
as it reaches this important milestone for both the school and the town. West Orange is a community filled with history and there is so much to discover and learn about all the familiar places we pass every day in all parts of town. Sometimes the surviving artifacts of history can easily blend into the background and go unnoticed. But with a little awareness and a trained eye, West Orange history can still be seen not far off the beaten path and hiding in plain view, waiting to be discovered on our familiar roads of home. For the Downtown West Orange Alliance, I'm Joe Fagan, and I'll see you on Main Street.